Hey Vision Chasers, this is Dr. Bird here with another social studies lesson for you today. You know, during the Gilded Age, the brand new technology and inventions paved the way for tremendous growth in the United States and it totally changed the way that Americans live their lives. And so today's lesson, we're going to focus on the new technology and the brand new inventions of the Gilded Age. Now the Transcontinental Railroad is going to be one individual railroad that connects the East Coast to the West Coast. And this railroad is going to pave the way for westward expansion because it's going to allow people to travel to the West faster. The railroad also allowed for businesses to send their goods out to people living in the West. Now, many people in the West were much appreciative of this um, because, for example, the homesteaders, they were living in houses made of sod. So they greatly appreciated the shipment of lumber that arrived on the Transcontinental Railroad. And then shortly after the railroad is complete, you see more and more states pop up in the West as a result of uh, the people traveling out to the West and making it their permanent homes. Next up, we have the Telegraph, which was the Twitter of the 1800s. Now, interestingly enough, as a railroad was being built, telegraph wires were also being built alongside the railroad. So in 1860, the government would ask for a company to step up and build this telegraph line. And the person who stood up and said, I will do it was Hiram Sibley of Western Union. And so if you've ever looked at one of those old school telegrams and wondered why Western Union is on that telegram, now you know. And so once Western Union finished the telegraph line, what would happen is people would communicate with each other by using Morse code. Now Morse code is a series of dashes and dots. And so those dashes and dots would be transcribed using this key that you see here on your screen. And so I know you're wondering, as a student, yes, it was very, very difficult to send text messages in class because you had this telegraph machine along with these wires and so the teacher would notice every time you were texting in class. Now Thomas Edison was known for many inventions, but most importantly, he is known for his version of the light bulb. Now it's interesting to mention that he did not invent the light bulb, but he came up with a light bulb that worked better than any other light bulb that was around at the time. And so it was after months of trying in 1879, Thomas Edison was able to create a light bulb that produced a slow burn for 14 and a half hours. And so imagine how much this invention changed people's lifestyles because once the sun went down, there was nothing else to do but go to bed. Advancements in electric power was also attributed to Thomas Edison as well here. He once said that, we will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn candles. And so ultimately this was going to equate to a lot of money for Thomas Edison because so many people were going to be consuming uh, his product. So it was in 1878 that uh, Edison formed the Edison Electric Light Company in New York. Now he was backed by several financiers including J.P. Morgan and members of the Vanderbilt family. Edison was a hard worker and he was very determined and he made a lot of people a lot of money. Now on a personal note, as it relates to Thomas Edison, I have to say as, a, as an animal lover, you've seen uh, my dog Louie uh, popping in and out of these lessons. Um, some of the experiments that Thomas Edison uh, conducted as it relates to electric power were very, very disturbing. And I encourage you, if you would like to uh, check out the footage of some of those experiments, they involve animals and electric power and you can only imagine just how horrific some of those uh, images are but you have to remember that at that time those things were acceptable and there wasn't as much awareness as there is now uh, towards you know animal cruelty and things of that nature so here what you see on your screen are pictures of the 1904 world's fair held in my hometown st louis missouri now, during this celebration, they brought in Thomas Edison to help them show off uh, the amazing advances in electricity and the light bulb. And so imagine people coming uh, into St. Louis from all over the world, having only heard about electric power and the light bulb. And so when the sun went down and the lights came on, these were just amazing images uh, that people saw for the very first time in their lives. 
Now steel was a widely used material during this period. It was used to build skyscrapers, bridges, and the Transcontinental Railroad. So during this time, the Bessemer process was created. Now the Bessemer process is simply a cheaper way to produce large, quant large quantities and high quality steel. And so after the first one of these machines comes to the United States in 1864, there is a huge amount of production of steel as a result. In 1860, there was 12,000 tons of steel produced in the United States. And that's gonna go up tremendously in 1890 when 4.3 million tons of steel are produced. By the late 1800s, people had a deep desire to electronically transmit their voice over wires. And Alexander Graham Bell figured this out in 1876. Now what's interesting to note is that he tried to sell this invention to Western Union. And remember, as I said before, Western Union was so deeply involved in the telegraph. Now what's interesting to mention is that Bell, once he invented the telephone, he actually tried to sell this invention to Western Union. And remember, as I said before, Western Union was deeply involved in the telegraph business, and so they refused uh, to buy this invention. And so Alexander Graham Bell started his own telephone company. It was called the Bell Telephone Company. and employed thousands of people. And back then, when they had the telephone, uh, whenever you made a call, you had to go through an operator and an operator would connect you to the person that you were trying to reach. Now, at first, only a very, very few people had phones in their home. Of course, these were rich people. But as time goes on, the price is going to fall and more and more people are going to have phones in their home. Again, changing life tremendously. Last but not least, I want to talk to you about oil. Now, back during this time, coal and steam were the top two energy sources. And so back then, the main way of harvesting this oil was to take a blanket and drill, drill a hole into the ground and take a blanket and sop up the oil and wring it over a barrel. And that was the main way to harvest oil back then. Now back then, oil was used to lubricate machines and it was also refined to make kerosene to burn lamps. Now a new kind of drilling was able to produce more oil and collect it easily. So in 1860, 500,000 barrels of oil were collected, but in 1862, you're gonna see a huge jump because of this new way of drilling. There were three million barrels of oil harvested from the ground. And also during this time, people figured out how to convert oil to gasoline so it could fuel engines. And then a foreshadowing of things to come, there's gonna be one person who buys up all these early companies that started drilling for oil and collecting it. And you're gonna find out who that is later. And so again, during this time, there were a lot of new technology and inventions that were discovered and they changed people's lives for the better. Well, that's our social studies lesson for the day. Please check the Vision Chasers website for more tips and tools as you chase your vision of success. Also, feel free to download the worksheet that goes along with this video to further your understanding of the new technologies and inventions of the Gilded Age. Well, thank you so much for watching, and until we meet again, please keep chasing the vision. Bye.